Welcome to another episode of the Larry's Pop Pod. I'm Chris Larry. I'm Amelia Larry. Hey, I'm Mary Larry. And you're listening to the second installment of our Summer's End two-parter. So, stop. If you have not listened to episode one, we would kindly suggest that you listen to that first and then come back and listen to this one. Also, you'll notice we have a third person in the chair. It's our executive producer, Mary Larry, and semi-regular guest. Welcome back to the Pop Pod. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me back. And Amelia, maybe you can tell us why um, we've invited Mary on this episode. Well, we went camping, and of course, we didn't do it just me and Chris, so we did it as a family, so we went camping, and so that's why she is on this episode. Yeah, one thing about doing what well, we really felt like we needed a, a two-parter, because after we did part one and we talked about some of the things that are highlights, some themes of the summer, we actually hadn't done our big summer blowout bonanza that we had been thinking about doing a podcast on the whole time, which was visiting the Finger Lakes region of New York and eating different stuff and experiencing different new things, etc. So we hadn't really done that yet. So we wanted to have a, an episode that was just about that. And that really was the brainchild, the mastermind, the creative genius of one Mary Larry. So why don't you give us a little bit of a story about uh, sort of how we put the summer blowout Finger Lakes package together. Yeah, so basically a couple years ago, we really wanted to take Amelia camping and share our love of camping with her, but at the time, we got a kitten, so we realized we couldn't leave the kitten alone um, for long periods of time, so we decided to put that on hold, and uh, it finally came together this year. We found you know, Watkins Glen, which is just a couple hours north of our place in the Catskills, and we were really looking for a beautiful spot um, with waterfalls, and boy, did it deliver. Everything that we'll talk about for most of this episode will be some things that we saw, read, ate, experienced, viewed, etc. Um, on our trip. And also, Amelia and I will be checking in a little bit of a summer blockbuster recap and rewind. Amelia, there was a real new first for you uh, as maybe the crown jewel of this trip. So, let's get some of your impressions of camping. Well, I just love sleeping in, in the tent and having meals by the campfire and also hearing the crickets at night. night it, it was really fun. Yeah, Mary and I hadn't actually been camping in a while uh, and you had never been camping, so this was your first camping experience, uh, which we'd love to get some sort of more specifics on here in a second. But, Mary, you you really, camping was a big part of some of your summers in the past. What, what's sort of your emotional connection to camping? When I was about seven years old, my family, um, you know, trucked across country in a van and a tent and uh, five kids and my mom, my dad would fly and meet us in different cities. And we all were allowed to just take one laundry bag of clothes. So we took two and a half months, camped across America, and it was awesome. So we wanted to share a little bit of that with Amelia and uh, have her feel some of those great bonding experiences. Now, we went to Watkins Glen State Park, which was actually voted the number th three best state park in America. So it is spectacular. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this particular camp. Excuse me. Particular campsite and our experiences there. It was one very clean, very beautiful. I didn't feel like I was on top of my neighbors, but it also had that kind of campsite vibe at the same time. What were some of your impressions about Watkins Glen State Park, especially if people might be wanting to go? Well, I think it's just if you're looking for good nature, not like right on top of your neighbors, as you said. Watkins Glen is clean, and I think they just found the forest with the gorge, cleaned it out. And then made it a camping site. It's like you're hiking, but you have campers all around you. And sometimes you go uh, walks at night and you find cool RVs or cool trailers. You talk to your neighbors, you meet people, people string up lights, people have rugs, people have a whole situation going on that they really take it to the next level, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 
Maybe we could all share one thing that we had is a little bit of camping envy, like new equipment, mm -hmm. what other people did for setup. What were some things where, like, when we do it next time, we need to get our camping game better? Mine is I love the lights. The lights were so pretty. It'd be a little hard to do it on a tent, especially our tent, but you can also do it on, like, if you have trailer or RVs that have the pop-ups that, if you rain, you can stay under there you can put the lights across that or maybe you can just put them trees you know it's really fun with the lights and also if you're going to the bathroom at night you'll know where your campsite is <laughs> so you're saying definitely pack uh pack the box of christmas lights next time we go camping yes <laughs> people did have their lights game we tried to hack a lights game together we took our glow sticks and just hung them up randomly around our campsite on night two. So we tried We tried to have a little bit of a uh, hacky light setup. That's a good one. Mary, what's your, what, be, what was your one camping envy in terms of equipment? I think you guys both know. I saw right when we were driving in a teardrop trailer made out of, you know, real all natural wood. Cedar. Cedar wood. It was, I'd say like 60s style, right? Yeah. And wow. Inside was just a queen bed. They had a little TV. It was a little home on wheels, but it was small. It only weighed, I think, 80 pounds. And um, it was a couple there. This guy had custom made this thing, and I was ready to get one right there on site. It was so cute. Yeah, I had to make sure every time we walked around the campsite that we left our wallets back in the <laughs> locked car. Because uh, Mary may have bought one from this guy. It was spectacular. We have a picture of it. Yeah, I think we do. We'll put that. Um, we'll post that to Instagram. We'll put it into our show notes so you can check this thing out. Um, that was a great one. For me... I liked the way, it kind of builds on both of your comments, but I like the way that some people almost make their campsites like more like their like home with their own decorations. I love the outdoor carpets. That might be the thing that to me, I don't know why it's not that practical, but the people that had like these cool outdoor carpets that just kind of gave a vibiness to their campsite, I love that. So next time, I'm definitely rolling into Target and getting the twenty nine ninety nine outdoor carpet for our next camping trip. Book yeah. it. And shout out to Brian, who gave us some tips. Um, in the last episode, they really did work. We set up our campfire before we went hiking. We set up our tent right when we got there. We set up our laundry line right when we got there. And to be honest, that was such great advice. Thank you, Brian. We did what you said, and it worked out for us. So... Every night you, of course, have to spend some time around the campfire to eat dinner, to have warmth, and especially it's just fun to stay up late when you're camping. So we sat around the campfire and made hot dogs on uh, sticks. So we got those and we just roasted them. They were so greasy and I love them. I ate two and usually I eat half a hot dog and they were so good. They were the best tacos. I, I mean, not tacos. They were the best hot dogs I've ever tasted. Yeah, one thing for me that I really reconnected with in this trip camping, which I kind of forgot about, was how fun it is to do just everyday tasks. That that's actually the activity, you know, cooking, setting up, cleaning, all that. Like, at one point I, you know, I was like, am I really having this much fun cleaning out dirty dishes in a cold water spigot? Um, and I was like, yes, I am, in fact, having fun with that. And the obviously eating and cooking is the high point of that. What was the, Mary, what was maybe the favorite thing that we made that, at the campfire? In the morning, we got up. Well, first of all, we were really proud of our pour over coffee that we were able to jerry rig together. You know, Chris would boil the water and we had the coffee grinds and we poured over and had to get the right kind of ratio. At first, it was too weak, then too strong. And then the second thing I have to say, Amelia, come on. We made banana chocolate chip pancakes in a skillet. And I think that it was the best thing we ever tasted that morning, don't you think? Yeah. And also... I had hot chocolate packets yep. that I drank. First, they were steaming, so I wouldn't drink it, but then it was like, oh, this is the best thing to have in the morning, because in the morning, it's like it's like 50 degrees, so it's cold. It's cold. It might be a little bit colder than 50 degrees. One uh, pro tip that I'm going to throw out to all the kind of like once, twice a year car camper people, which, let's be honest, we are. I mean, we're acting <laughs> like we like, you know, just hiked the Adirondacks and pitched a tent on the top of a mountain. But no, this is car camping and we're noobs, so some of the experienced campers are probably laughing at us. But, pro tip, we brought along these mac and cheese packs that are supposed to be for the microwave, which means you just need hot water. Instead, we just boiled water on the, on the fire. 
And we had like pop up mac and cheese that was so good, and that yeah. was like definitely like a little added bonus, super easy to do. So, mm -hmm. pro tip for everyone in their next campsite. But the reason we went to Walk and Stay Glen, great facilities. Oh, I would be remiss not to talk about that they have an awesome outdoor pool. Yeah, that was great. Any thoughts on the outdoor pool? Well, we thought it was indoor, so it was like, oh, let's wait till tomorrow till it's raining, then we can still have like swimming time. So yeah, and then we we drove up and we were like, wait, that's the pool. That's outdoor, not indoor. It was just r super refreshing after hiking and feeling all sticky and gross to jump in the pool at the end of the day, and it's totally surrounded by nature. So it is just a gorgeous setting, beautiful setting. Gorge us again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's maybe move into where that pun comes from. But just to say, to cap it off, Watkins Glen, Watkins Glen State Park is a beautiful facility and I we could not recommend it more highly. But the real the real reason to go in terms of what their big attraction is at the park is actually the gorge. And what the gorge is is about 10 or 12 million years ago, basically the mountain split in half. It just got it kind of cracked. And so the gorge is that crack that runs all the way down the mountain there. And that means that water, whether it's ice melting or rainwater is coming from the top of the mountain down and it goes into the lakes and the streams, the oceans, etc. But through the gorge, it creates all these waterfalls. So they have this about a round trip, three mile hike that you do that you go down into the gorge and you literally walk, walk amongst the uh, waterfalls. And again, it's gorge us. <laughs> <laughs> you walk right into the waterfalls and it, it was really such a thrilling experience. I got to, you know, put Amelia's hand out into the water, making sure she didn't fall over. And uh, everybody stops and takes pictures there because it's such a unique experience. Yeah, we'll definitely post some of our photos. They don't do the experience justice, but you can kind of give a little bit of an idea. What were some of your major impressions about being down in the gorge, Amelia? I just, I really liked walking behind the waterfalls and feeling them. And sometimes like there was rocks that I'd pick up to and throw them to see how deep it was throw them into the waterfalls, and then there's these rainbow ones that's just little droplets. And so I took a slow-mo video of it just to see what the droplets look like. And it's like, it's literally like drops of water just falling off. I mean, it's not like that in real life. It's actually fast and like a sprinkles, but yeah. Yeah, that one, the Rainbow Waterfalls is the one you're talking about. It's really wide, and um, you can really see the water in a different way because it, it's long and wide. And um, p you definitely will get wet when you go under it, so people are running through it, right? Yeah, and, I mean, be careful when you run. And also, <laughs> if you are lucky, if you're at the right time, the sun reflects on it, and it makes a rainbow. We didn't get to see that, but yeah. Yeah, the, the gorge hike was... Absolutely incredible. Definitely the main attraction of an already great uh, state park camping site. So could not recommend all of that more than we are right now. Now we also, Watkins Glen as a town is actually pretty cool as well. And we did some things there. Mary is awesome at finding out local tips. So she interrogated the woman at one of the ice cream shops that we went to. I believe it was, that one was the uh, Colonial Pottery and Creamery. Yep. And she got a list of her favorite local spots. So after we done, did sort of the major label hike in the gorge, we went and did the indie hike from Mom's Secret Tip. Yeah, I asked this woman, you know, did she have any favorite local swimming holes? And she gave us this tip that, you know, you find the blue marker on the side of the road and you hike a mile in. And so we had these very, this girl was awesome. She wrote down super specific directions. And we decided to go chase this waterfall, no pun intended, and um, and we ended up finding it, which was such a cool experience, don't you think? Yeah. We went chasing waterfalls. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I sound over what you're going to say, Amelia. Go for it. You could literally walk beside the gorge. We didn't want to go down into the rocks where you can swim because we had all these heavy gear on from hiking. So we didn't go down there, but you can. And you can walk up and literally like hike right next to the waterfall if you did as risky as we did. Yeah, I would, it was kind of cool because at the, at the uh, Watkins Glen Gorge, the one at the state park, 
it's beautiful. You get pretty close. You have all these great trails. You know, it's it, it's super cool. But it, oh, there's a lot of people there. At what point we were caught like in the bus churn was like you know we were through the selfie stick forest or whatever. <laughs> um, and so it's like sometimes it does get crowded and it, it is kind of prescriptive. You can't get near the water, etc. So when we went on this hike, we were the only people. We didn't see another yeah. person. And we could do whatever we wanted. And so when we got to a stretch that you could get in actually and sit amongst the waterfalls, wow. Yeah, you could feel the water, which was cold, I'm not going to lie. It's You can feel the moss. And so next year we're planning to enter a fairy garden contest. And we got amazing ideas from this gorge. Like... You can sit, fairies can sit on the top mountain with vines hanging down, and they have a waterfront house. Like, how awesome is that? Hey, Amelia, don't give away all our secrets. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking to enter the Gramsville Fair Fairy Building House Contest of 2018, we're coming for you. We did get some great, great ideas. And it was so great to be just so close. It, it gave us kind of these dual experiences of the area that was super cool. Um, we were kind of hightailing it out of Watkins Glen at that point uh, to go explore some other parts of the Finger Lakes, which we'll talk about in a second. But let's hit on Watkins Glen as a town. One, kind of an interesting place. It has a giant auto speedway, so it's actually been, you know, IndyCar racing, NASCAR racing, so especially in the Northeast where there aren't as many big auto racetracks, Watkins Glen is known as a, a big locale, and you can tell there's like classic cars and a lot of car culture in the town. It also, in 1973, was the site of a pretty famous rock concert called Summer Jam, uh, in which, you know, Mary and I like to think of ourselves as rock and roll historians, but we actually did not know about until some of our L, uh, older listeners and fans uh, said, oh, what it tipped us off to the rock and roll history of Watkins Glen. Do you know what that history is, Mary? I just know there was a giant concert there in 1973. I believe it was the Allman Brothers, the band, and the Grateful Dead. My brother, Paul, said, oh, do they still rock and roll there? Um, he, you know, had heard about this legendary concert and dreamed of going back then. But um, I think he was too young. So a, a couple people mentioned this this massive concert back in 73. It actually had over 600,000 people. Can you imagine over 600,000 people in that town that we were just wow. in? Wow. Huh. So we, maybe we'll post some more clips of that. So And then we would be remiss if we didn't give a couple quick reviews of some of our eating in Watkins Glen. So let's each give maybe one of our favorite spots that, that we ate at. Uh, I'll start. We went to this one roadside barbecue, and I wasn't really hungry, but I do love barbecue, especially roadside barbecue. And Mary was like, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. And I was like, but I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. Um, but we, we stopped, because Mary was on a hot streak with this. You know, when Mary has an idea on this trip, you follow it. This was her brainchild. So we stopped. It was called Prize Box, because the prize is in the box. Whoa. It was fantastic. Uh, they used cherry wood to smoke their meat. You see everything right there. We got some ribs. We got some chicken. Their sides were fantastic. So that was actually a fun little pit stop. Mary, what was your favorite food spot? You, you're passing on this one? No, I can't remember the name. What? Well, just describe it. We'll help you out. Oh, okay. It was the place we went on the last day in the north of the Finger Lakes. That was a little bit more Brooklyn. Oh, we, well, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh, sorry. This is just in Watkins Glen. Oh, probably the ice cream place with the 45s on the ceiling. That place was awesome. Chris, do you remember the name of that? That was actually The Great Escape. Oh, The Great Escape. So that Escape. actually, we sort of have the battle of the awesome ice cream parlors. Anyone want to, Amelia, what were the two ice creams we had? Um, we had Colonial I, uh, Pottery and Creamery and The Great Escape. And give us kind of like what was good about both of them and then give us your favorite. Great Escape was really good because they had all these homemade ice creams, which... People should you get not the Hershey's brands, just don't do that. And they had pinball machines, and yeah, it was just really fun. And the pottery and creamery, they had live bees. It was really cool. Um, That's right. Yeah, it was just, that one was really cool too. Their ice cream was good. You got, I think, cake flavor? Yeah, the cake batter. And you got, um... Oh, I can't think of this now. Oh, right. Mint chocolate chip, which was really good. I tried hers. And I got cotton, cotton candy. candy, as usual. 
<laughs> and then my favorite would be Great Escape. Yeah, they were very, they were both very good, and they were both very different. The cream, the uh, Colonial Creamery, it had like some great homemade pottery. It had the live bees. It was very kind of, it was almost like a little bit of a tourist info booth. I like that. That's where we got the hot tip on the indie hike. So I love that part of it. And the ice cream is very good. It was also homemade there too. I want to point out. I don't want to slight them. I have to give an edge to the Great Escape just because of my personal tastes. Their decor, 45s on the wall and the ceiling, pinball machine, arcade games, jukebox, that is so up my alley. So I didn't, I don't even think I had ice cream in that one. I think I just ate bites of yours. Yeah. And the woman told us that she bought a, an ice cream maker from Italy and they just set it up in the back and it was her parents' business. So it was kind of passed on to, through the generations, they were all family helping it out. And so we really support that business. It was a great experience. It was. So I have to think, as a family, we give a slight edge to The Great Escape. Yeah. Um, but they are both fantastic. In fact, why limit yourself to one ice cream cone if you're visiting an area? <laughs> so you can easily eat both and enjoy them for their individual charm. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a quick break and be back as and talk about some of the things that we loved as we expanded our exploration of the Finger Lakes area. So we'll be back in a quick second. Brooklyn bandanas, Brooklyn bandanas, get out and get one today. Brooklyn bandanas, Brooklyn bandanas, no time to waste a rate. Wipe your tears if you're feeling blue. Avoid a redneck and attract one too. You can hail a cab, wave it in the air, put it in your back pocket, shake it ear to ear. You can wrap it, wear it, dab it, tie it, hold it, knot it, wave it, buy it. Brooklyn bandanas, Brooklyn bandanas, get out and get one today. Com to get yours today. And welcome back to the Pop Pod. Um, we're going to finish out this segment talking about some of our wider explorations of the Finger Lakes region because after we did two nights of camping, we decided to sort of spur the moment, much like this whole trip, to stay in the region and we were able to uh, quickly book a reward hotel room at the Bellhurst Castle, which is a kind of old school New York hotel and uh, winery. That we found, and we'll talk about that in a quick second, um, and explore that whole region. Now, the Finger Lakes is actually a series of 11 lakes. They're very long. They kind of look like fingers. That's why, thus the name, um, in that region. The, probably the biggest town in that area is Ithaca, uh, in, which obviously houses the University of Cornell. So what, were you, what was your quick impressions of this area of New York? Well, I really like the lakes, and fun fact, Lake Seneca is the deepest lake in New York State. It's 670 feet deep, which is really deep, and I don't think anyone on this universe could stand. Yeah, that is, you can say that with confidence, yes. (laughs) (laughs) And it's... Just a really warm lake. There's sand beneath you that is the best sand ever. It t- it's like a mud of sand, and it ripples. It feels so good. So, yeah, I really like that. The sand did feel good. Those guys jumped in the lake. It was a little too cold for me. Um, it was just so pretty, this general area that we had never you know, really experienced and seen how big of a lake and all the nature around there. It just really was gorgeous, for sure. It was. Um, We were mostly on Lake Seneca, the deep lake, as Amelia was talking about. Although one characteristic of all the Finger Lakes is they're all very deep. They're kind of like long and deep. And so we wanted to, we just weren't ready to leave the area. So that's a good, that's a good endorsement right there. So, but what would, we went up to Geneva, which is more on the north side of the lake and did some of the things there. Now, mom, Mary Larry, excuse me, you know, she's our executive producer of the Pot Pot, as we have mentioned. And she had done some great networking and research to kind of give us some starter hints on what to do. So what was, how did, how did you put that together? So basically um, our next door neighbor and friend Andrea, her, she mentioned that um, a good friend of hers and Nico's best friend, Hudson's friend of the pod, Nico, friend of the pod, Nico, Hudson's family has a place in Seneca and Geneva and so on Seneca Lake and grew up there. So she gave us some local tips of restaurants and things to do, mentioned the wineries up there and the cheese tastings and stuff like that. So we were able to kind of go off this list of recommendations, which was awesome. So shout out to Hudson's family. 
Thank you for those tips. We we went to the Bellhurst Castle. We also went to a couple of the restaurants that you mentioned, which we really, really liked. And um, do you want to talk about those? Uh, sure. The, probably my favorite was we went to the Captain's Room. Let me see if I got the name exactly right. Captain's Room Cafe. Awesome greasy spoon. They had everything in there was Captain's theme, Captain Crunch, Captain Hook, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Captain, Captain Cap- Underpants. Captain Underpants. <laughs> so that was fun. It was obviously a kind of a college town type joint. They claim to have the best hash browns in the Finger Lakes region, and I cannot argue against that. They had wacky stuff, so that was a lot of fun. They make their own bread. They make their own bread, so that I cannot recommend that highly enough. And one thing about that region, as we mentioned, was it's a lot of wineries and cheese, cheeseries. What do they call cheese farms? Whatever cows and <laughs> creameries. I don't know what they're called. But and we went cheese tasting as a family. Yeah, uh, Amelia, why did you love that so much? I love that so much because it's just the cheese was so good literally so when we got home me and Mary Larry finished the our favorite cheese it was I couldn't you guys stop already finished eating one of the cheeses it. yeah <laughs> I couldn't stop eating it with crackers it was so good I couldn't stop so now I want to go back there and stock up on like seven. Because it, it's pretty far away from our house, so we can't just go there. Yeah. So I want to stock up on seven of those cheeses and bring them home. Yeah. The name of the this particular cheese farm, I guess you call it, is Miranda, and it was really awesome. They have this old barn, and actually not old, pretty new barn with Christmas lights everywhere, and you kind of go in, and you have you know someone that walks you through the cheeses. I'd say there was probably maybe 13, was that right? And we had a little sheet of paper that we were able to check off the cheeses we liked, didn't like, and take notes as we were tasting. There was also a wine pairing to go with it, or for Amelia, she had an apple cider, um, fresh pressed. And it was so cool to learn about all the cheeses and the processes, and they you know, make the cheeses and have them right below the barn. So it was great. Then you get to go finish your glass of wine or, or apple cider, out on the back deck and see the cows and you know hear the kind of history of these cows which I guess most cows don't have a long life I guess typically but these cows are aged and you know they had a cow out there I think that was like 13 years old or 15 years old or something. Also believe it or not that these cheeses age for two plus years which is crazy because like how are you gonna have cheese every day for people to taste it right? So it's hard to stock up on some of those cheese and one year cheese. It's funny how they age it. It's like right under your feet. Yeah, it's in their basement basically. Um, and they specialize. We don't, I mean, we are not cheesemongers in terms of knowing everything. Um, but they specialize in these cow based cheeses. So it was Gouda, Cheddar, Blue Cheese. Um, what were some of the other kinds? Does anyone remember more of them? Um, I just know, like, they had, they had, like, younger Gouda and older Gouda to see how you like, which one you like better, if you like aging cheese better, and if you don't like aging cheese better. That's all I remember. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, one of the big things to do in the Finger Lakes region, around Geneva, and those other towns up there, is to go wine tasting. It's as big as, like, a Sonoma Valley or Napa Valley in California. It makes some world-renowned wines, but, you know. Amelia Larry's not really ready to go wine tasting yet, obviously, <laughs> as a eight-year-old. And so it's not really fair to do a lot of that. So, But this kind of experiencing and being able to taste and having an expert talk to you about stuff, that is super fun. It doesn't have to be about wine. So it was really cool to do that with cheese and have a person explain stuff and be within this beautiful environment. So it was a, a, a lot of fun. And cheeses did come home with us we can admit that but one connection to another activity that we did on Seneca Lake to this cheese was a sailing trip we went on on Seneca Lake because that's actually where we had this cheese and knew to go to this cheese tasting so the sailing trip was another one of those spontaneous things what were some pluses and minuses of this particular sailing trip 
Well, the sailing trip was the schooner, and um, right was that the name of it? The schooner, the Love Nest schooner, uh, or something. We'll we'll put the name in the show. Yeah, notes. and so it's this very old wooden sailing boat, all natural wood. It was really cool, but um, we ended up going on a sunset cruise, and by the time we got on the boat. It was really windy and choppy, and he said, okay, get ready for a spirited ride. Our captain was Terry. He was awesome um, and really knew how to handle that boat, but it was definitely a little chilly that night, and we definitely got wet. Yeah, I think one of the pluses is that the, the there was actually, there was literally waves in a lake. Like, where do you find waves in a lake so that was fun riding the waves on this boat and I liked being on the top side because as you know the sails have to change and you'd either be on the low side or the tall side but we definitely got splashed in the face and dad here got splashed in the face so much (laughs) and it was freezing. We had a blanket, luckily, and I was getting pretty hungry, and they had appetizers, so it was fun, and it was freezing. It was fun and freezing. That was probably an apt description. I definitely got completely drenched. No matter where I positioned myself, I seemed to get, it was very choppy, windy out on Lake Seneca that day, and I got face, body full of waves over and over and over and over again. And the last one that he got, it was like literally <laughs> over his whole face, one side of his face since he was facing us and facing the lake and his shirt and then also it splashed me around the legs and I was like <gasps> it's just that there wasn't the best day to go. We couldn't wait to get back to our campfire <laughs> but I also wanted to give a little shout out to the fierce girls that were the crew that day. Man, they were so strong. They were able to hoist this old sail up and one after the other they just churned this out in the wind i couldn't believe how strong they were they were awesome right yeah it was actually a lot of fun freezing and fun is the great way to describe it and this is i think one of only 10 of these style boats that exist in the world so it was kind of cool to go out on one and we got a lot of tips about the area as we explored over the next kind of day and a half we want to finish off with a couple of really highlighted experiences that we had in and around geneva in that area And what I want to talk about is we actually went to Seneca Falls, New York, if you uh, know your history out there, is actually a bit of the birthplace for women's rights in America, and if not the globe, I think is officially the first gathering where women actually talked about their rights as individuals separate from men that happened anywhere in the world. We, we I knew we were close and, and we got closer. I was like, hey, why don't we go do this? It's actually a national Mon- it's actually a national park, um, and it was it was really special to go there, and it was a really a I don't know it was a really introspective way to kind of spend some time on our trip. Do you all have some thoughts? Yeah, I kind of knew we were going to end up there anyway because it was a it was really fun, and of course we like museums, we like that sort of things, so we went. And it was really fun. Did you learn some things there? Or what was, you know, there was, it's kind of a reflective place. What did you kind of learn or think about as a as a girl? I kind of thought about how, well, when we were back then, when we had, girls had big puffy dresses that were rated as like five bricks on their body. And then Amelia Bloomer had the idea to make a bloomer which is basically a skirt, um, a shirt, and pants under the skirt. So, yeah, that was really fun to see the pictures. And we watched a little movie, which was fun. Yeah, and what did you learn about kind of, you know, rights for girls and for women back then? Did you learn anything about that? Yeah, I kind of learned, like, so they had this shelf, which was split. And it was boys' toys and girl toys. So, like, girl toys would be dolls, doll houses, and all those kind of things. But then on the boys' side, there was, like, yo-yos and race cars. and. But I thought, I like to play with the yo-yo. Like, why are you putting in that in the boys' section when a girl would play with that? So what was important to me about this location was, you know, the fact that we were able to look back on the 
rights of women. It was where the Declaration of Sentiments was formed. And, you know, this powerful group of women stood up, stood out, and gathered together in Seneca Falls. It was in a church there. Um, and they, you know, kind of had some support of some men, but they were able to f pass this declaration. And women were eventually earned the, vote, the right to vote, which to me was super special to take Amelia there. We took a photo on that corner and really felt the you know history of our past, the, the gratitude of these women and men that came together in that moment. Yeah, and I didn't realize that my great, great grandmother couldn't vote because she was in that time around Frederick Douglass and those, those historic people. Oh, she's a little later than that. But yeah. yes, that actually shows how kind of not right it was that it took from the time that they signed the Declaration of Sentiments, it took another probably 60 years, which is when your great-great-grandmother's time would have been, that she still wouldn't able to vote. So it really is incredible. It, I don't know. There was something very powerful. They had this one monument. It's, it's not a big national park. There's a little, like, park. There's a museum. They've refurbished the corner and the church where they did all those first meetings. And one of the things they've done uh, was built this monument that has this smooth stone with all of the words of the Declaration of Sentiments written out and then all the people that signed them with water coming. It's very powerful. I, I found it to be a very moving and reflective moment to look at that monument, and especially connecting it to the beauty of nature that we had seen and a similar waterfall effect. I don't know. It really it was a special moment for me on this trip. So, I, And I really appreciated being there with, with you know, the two most important uh, women in my life. Oh, Yeah, that was really fun for me. And that Geneva was just really cute. And mm -hmm. Seneca Falls was really cute. Those areas were just really cute. So maybe we, um, we've talked a lot about our trip. Um, and gave you some good tips in the area uh, and that it's a really fun time and we really appreciate seeing more of New York State. We really do love the state. It's it's Mary, Larry, and I's adopted home and it's your home, Amelia. So New York City and New York State, we sort of are, are real patriots for things, all things New York. So maybe what we kind of began this whole segment thinking, kind of give me people a preview of what we liked. Maybe let's all call out one thing that we want to do more of based on, on this trip. Well, I really want to do more camping, 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 and it was really fun just camping. Yeah, I'd say I'd probably want to do more hiking in natural spots that we have not discovered yet. So actually, if anyone has tips on good campsites or hiking trips that they'd like to share with the Pop Pod, uh, you can reach us. All the details are in the show notes. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got a segment about similar trips you'd like to record and send in, uh, we would be happy to air them. And as you know, all submissions get two free movie passes. The thing that made me... I... I think I would want to continue on this New York theme. New York is such a great, beautiful, diverse state in all these different ways that you can talk about diversity of people, of physical locations, of kinds of experiences. So it just kind of inspired me. I want to make sure that, you know, we kind of see all of the state. All right, well, thank you, Mary, uh, for joining us on this segment. We will be back in just a moment where Amelia and I are going to kind of put an end to the summer blockbuster season with some of our impressions, some of our hits and misses from our predictions at the beginning of the summer, and look at what we did like and what we were kind of, uh, well, let's say, meh on. So we will be right back. Hi, I'm Amelia Larry from the Larry's Pop Pod. Did you know you can find us on your favorite podcasting apps? Look for the Larry's Pop Pod on iTunes, Google Play Store, and and Stitcher. You can see links in show description. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back. Uh, now we're going to talk about the end of the summer movie season. Some of our impressions of the films we did see, why we didn't see some of the ones that we were excited about, and talk about our uh, opinion about Spider Man as the official last movie of the summer that we did see. One, I just want to give some facts. This summer's box office, the money that the movies made, was the worst for Hollywood in over 10 years. It was down almost 15% from the summer last year. Uh, so the movies really did not do well this summer. Any thoughts on that, Amelia? Yeah, I thought there were some good movies like Wonder Woman and other movies, but I guess people just didn't think that. 
Well, people did like those movies. In fact, the three movies that I think both you and I agree were our favorite movies of the summer and the ones that we did really want to go see in the theaters were Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Spider-Man Homecoming. So those were actually three of the big movies. So people did go see those movies. They just didn't see a lot of other movies. That's probably the problem. So let's actually start with some of our impressions of Spider-Man before we kind of look at the summer as a whole. Uh, We went and saw Spider-Man basically two days before you went back to school? Yes. So right at the end of of the summer for us, and we loved it. What did you think about Spider-Man? I loved it. It's probably my second favorite movie for this summer, and it was just, it was really good. It it's hard to explain, but some reason in there, it was so good. I think I'll give you... Let me see if I can take a couple chances of seeing of why I thought it was so good. Um, one, it wasn't the Spider-Man origin story. We've seen the Spider-Man origin story time and time again. They made literally made two huge movies of it in the last 15 years, 20 years. We, we know he got bitten by a radioactive spider. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. We know all that. It was just so refreshing to see a Spider-Man story that wasn't about a, how he became a superhero. That was one reason. What was another reason that you really liked it? I really liked it because he isn't like a full superhero saving lives from an evil villain. But he's kind of doing his town cleanup. Yeah, in Queens, right? Queens, New York City, which I think is a great point. He was kind of a small... That's the wrong word. He was kind of a, a superhero doing more local things, and that was one of the great, great themes of the movie. In fact, that it was so much set in Queens and all of New York City that one of the reasons I really love this movie it was a great New York City movie. Um, they were in Coney Island, they were in Manhattan, they were in Queens. Um, you really got a sense that this was a story set and about New York City. The Staten Island Ferry. Staten Island Ferry, exactly. So that was a super cool thing about it. Another thing that I really liked about it was that he, this one, he's still in high school, um, and it was a great teen comedy. What did you think about it being sort of about teenagers and young people? Yeah, because that kind of also goes back to the superhero, because this girl's dad that goes to the same, um, same school as him... Now, wait, are you about to do spoilers? Not totally. All right, so there may be a spoiler alert warning. Spoiler alert warning here. Just giving you a heads up. Proceed. Uh, is somebody that you don't want to know? <laughs> you bailed on that spoiler. Yeah, one thing that I liked about it was so many of the scenes are set in high school and about sort of you know teen crushes and about uh, things that go on with teenagers. I thought it was one of the best teen comedies I've seen in a long time. It took us until the end of the summer, but we really did love Spider Man. Which is kind of funny because as we did our summer preview episode, uh, which you can find and we'll, uh, if you wanted to see what we thought about what movies were going to be like, you can check that out. But I actually was very vocal that I was not excited for Spider-Man when we talked about it at that time and decided not to highlight that movie. I did not see it on the trailer list, so I didn't know it was out. I mean, I did, but I didn't see the trailer. I haven't seen the trailer. So I thought I was kind of excited because I've never seen a Spider-Man movie except for that Spider-Man Homecoming. And it was really good. And I think if you have a free weekend day, it's going out of the theater soon. So go run and watch. So that brings us to, we both agree that Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Spider-Man Homecoming were the best movies of the summer, right? Yes. Now that also means that... Um, what were some other movies that you saw uh, that maybe weren't as good as you had hoped? The Emoji Movie. Da, da, da. Don't like that movie. It didn't work out very well, I don't think. No, and you can wa- you can listen to uh, Da Emoji's Mini Pop, where we, Amelia gives her full review of the Emoji Movie. Yeah, we had a lot of movies that we were excited for that we ended up not seeing. I think Valerian was one of those ones. And the reviews were so bad. We were so excited because the trailer looked amazing, but the reviews were so bad that it just really motivated us not to even bother. I still wanted to go just to have a bad review on it and actually like either think like the critics or go against the critics. Are you disappointed that we didn't see it? Kind of, but it's out of the theaters now, so. Uh, a few other movies I, I'm looking forward to on... 
Netflix or cable or whatever or on demand looking forward to seeing the Planet of the Apes movie which I didn't get a chance to see which actually did get pretty good reviews and so a lot of the movies that we sort of highlighted we didn't end up seeing because the reviews were so bad or Gunslinger or The Dark Tower excuse me was another one that I was very excited about in our preview list um, that just did not do well and the critics hated it but there is still Star Wars to lift the crowd right we have look forward to Star Wars around uh, The Last Jedi coming out around uh, the holiday season. All right, so if we were going to rank the three, our three favorite movies and what I think all of America thinks are the three best movies of the summer, which, you know, is still these big Marvel and DC Universe movies, so superheroes are still the queens and kings of the movies, right? Yeah, and also not even... Some superheroes aren't, aren't, I mean, some movies aren't even superheroes like Star Wars and they're still kings and queens. Right. So those kind of, and so movies that have stories and characters that people have known and loved for a long time is actually what's still making money in Hollywood, even if a lot of other movies simply are not doing that well, especially from this summer. Um, All right. So if you were going to rank them, give it. Knowing that we loved all three, give us your ranking. Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Really? Okay. And remember, you can listen to our full reviews of Guardians of the Galaxy and Wonder Woman on earlier episodes, which we will make sure we put in the show description. We'll put the links to those episodes. Why Wonder Woman number one? Because it just kind of, it was really cool for a lot of people. Everyone was like, oh, I'm going to see Wonder Woman on Friday with my friend. And a lot of people just cherished Wonder Woman. And I have to agree with them. And so why did they cherish Wonder Woman? Why did it make, why did, is making it Wonder Woman different than other superheroes? Why do you think there was that special buzz about it? Because it's not like, oh, haha, I'm saving the world. It's, she wants to help people from not dying and She wants to have the war to stop all wars. Right, she wants to protect people and sort of bring peace rather than just constantly fighting. Okay, for me, and this is with the idea that all we really did love all three of these and it's very hard to rank them, but I would probably have to say Spider-Man Homecoming number one, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is my number two, and Wonder Woman was my number three. The main reasons for that, I think, are that Spider-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy just do some new things with the genre of superheroes that I think Wonder Woman, which I thought was awesome, did follow some kind of traditional story arcs of superhero movies that we've seen recently. Although I think it did it way better. So it's really hard for me to put that as number three but because I really loved all three movies. All right, so we will be probably previewing movies for fall and winter. Star Wars is definitely on our list and probably some other things as well as kind of getting into some fall previews of music, movies, TV over our next couple of episodes, full length and mini pops. But I think this brings summer officially to a close. Any parting shots on summer? Nope. Only that school's already started. So. And so really summer feels definitely, definitely over. And for me, I know that summer is over because football season has started. So uh, maybe Amelia and I will talk about some of our impressions of the NFL season. You're saying no, Amelia? No! Okay, she doesn't like to admit that she likes football. But we'll debate that on a future episode. So with this, we will put summer 2017 to bed. Good night, summer 2017. Bye-bye!